through the step-by-step -step on how to cannulate a dialysis AV fistula. I'll also diff show you different ways to tape those needles down, and then I'm going to, after all that hard work, I'm going to remove those needles. These are all the things that I need to cannulate a patient. The drape is this white pad that is under the patient's arm. It has a plastic underside and will catch any blood that escapes the fistula and help protect the patient's clothing and all of our pillows and blankets. Just like everything everywhere, we will start by cleaning our hands. For patients that can walk into the facility, they will stop at the sink and wash their fistula with soap and water. If Usually if they're in a wheelchair or if they have problems with dexterity, we will wash their fistula arm for them in the chair and my arm can't walk, so I, I washed it myself. Next, I'm going to assess the fistula. I'm going to look for signs and symptoms of infection, any redness, uh, rashes, any, any drainage, and then everybody say it with me now, we feel a thrill. I've been in dialysis nursing for five years and I used to always feel the fistula with the tips of my fingers and just last month, somebody showed me to feel with the palms of my hands because the sensation is different there and you can, def you can, you can feel a little better the, the thrill with the palms of your hands. So that's what I'm doing there. And next, I'm going to hear a brewy. I'm going to listen for any whistling, any, de any decrease in the thrill or brewy, and any significant changes, I am going to notify the provider. If I do not hear a thrill or a brewy, I am not going to cannulate because that fistula is not working and you will just get blood clots. This next thing that I'm showing you is the anastomosis. This is where the the surgeon connected the artery and vein to make the fistula. So this is where the increased blood flow goes that gets that, that vein nice and fat for our needles. I'm going to stay at least two inches away from the anastomosis. I might go too close here. If I go too close, everything might just go in perfectly. I might get a great flash of blood, but once I hook them up to the machine, I am going to get arterial alarms, high arterial alarms, because the blood, when you get too close to the anastomosis, the blood flow is just not where it needs to be, and you will not get the blood you need to clean. Next, every facility might have different policies on your antiseptic agents, how long they clean and how long they dry. Uh, chlorhexidine, our facility's policy is to scrub for 15 seconds and let dry for 30 seconds. With chlorhexidine, this is very important because patients will get a rash if you do not let that dry and you tape over the wet skin. And then you'll move on to alcohol, which is a 60 second scrub time and a quick dry. And then betadine are for our people with really sensitive skin that have broken out in rashes. This you will kind of do a circle and let that dry for two to three minutes. Check your facilities policy on, on that. So here I'm gonna pretend scrub for one minute because I cannot find something to say for a whole minute, believe it or not. So here I am scrubbing, scrub, scrub, scrub. And then I'm not going to touch that site. I'm going to put the tourniquet on and then I am going to cannulate. I'm going to pick my site I'm going to not touch that site and I am going to insert my needle. I'm going to insert it slow and I'm going to watch right around here in the tubing for some blood return. So here I've got blood and what you want to see is this pulse. Don't, don't take your hand off the needle folks. I just, I needed three hands for this demonstration and I only have two. Cause I needed to get some pressure into that blood. There's no, my arm doesn't have a blood pressure. So that is what you want. If at any point, I'll show you on the next needle. So my needle is in, I had good bounce. I'm gonna clean around the site. I'm not going to take my hand off of the needle. Do as I say, not as I do, and I'm going to tape it down. Next, you'll find that some people will clean the arterial site and then the venous site right away. I I've been trying to get away from that because whenever I cannulate, I end up putting a hand up here uh, where my venous needle is going to go. So I, I should 
be cleaning that again if I'm if I'm if my hands are all over where I want to cannulate. Pulse, boom, 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 boom. That's what you want. All right, I'm gonna clean again. Good job, Lindsay. Excellent technique. One minute scrub, quick dry for alcohol. There I'm measuring. You want to keep these needles at least two inches apart. And then I'm just kind of like measuring where the, how far the needle is in the arm. And I'm making sure I'm going above that at least two inches. Here, I'm hoping that I'm not all over the site over here. I'm using the hand as a brace to keep, keep that keep from touching that arterial needle. So here I'm going to cannulate. I picked my spot. And I'm going to, going to put that needle in nice and slow. And I'm going to watch for blood return in here. Don't take your hand off the needle. But here I've got the blood return. Boosh, boosh. Oh, that is beautiful. And now I'm going to insert my needle more. And if at any point I lose this pulse here, I'm not in the fistula anymore. And I need to pull the needle out till I get that flash again and then advance the needle again. These are called pass-throughs. You want to keep these pass-throughs to a minimum because every time I'm going in and out, I am puncturing the inside of the fistula and uh, long-term too many times that can cause damage, bruising, pain. So here I'm going nice and slow and here I'm in and I've got the pulse. Whoosh. Boosh, boosh. Then I'm going to clean that either with alcohol, sterile gauze. You don't want to leave blood on the patient's arm. Number one, it's it's gross. You want to keep that site clean. And number two, you need to know if the blood there is old or new. While they're on treatment, you want to make sure that that site is clean and dry. You don't want them continuous, continuously oozing out of that fistula site during dialysis. There's a lot of blood flowing through those fistulas. 600 mils per minute of blood at least going through that fistula. Good. I got a good pulse. Boom, boom, boom. Now here, the next step is you want to get blood all the way to the end of the needle. So there's a lot of pressure in a, in a real patient's arm. So just by turning this cap, the blood is going to get to the end. Then you're going to twist the cap back on and clamp it. So let's see how I do. There, clamp it, set it down. So I'm gonna do the same here. Open the cap, blood's gonna come to the end, cap it. Oh, my cap fell off, that's okay. I'm gonna make it work. So here, and I cannot stress this enough, and the longer I do this, the more I do this, is you do not want to push anything back into this arm if you are not certain that these needles are in the fistula. You're going to just, and that means the blood's going to go outside of the fistula. You're going to cause pain, bruising, and damage to that fistula. So here I have an empty syringe and I'm going to pull back. If I'm not in this fistula, I will not be able to pull back this syringe. So here I'm going to pull back. I'm getting a nice easy blood return so I can push that blood back in because I know I am in that fistula. Next thing I'm doing is I'm going to flush this needle with saline. If at any point you're having trouble with one of the needles, it is good practice to flush this other, other needle because patients do clot and they can get a clot at the tip of that needle if the blood is just sitting there stagnant. So that is what I'll do. Otherwise, if you get a clotted needle, then you have to recannulate and it, it just sucks for everybody. All right. I'm doing the same thing here. I have an empty syringe. I'm going to pull back. Pulls back easy. I know I'm in the fistula. I'm going to pu push that blood back in. And here I'm doing the saline again. If everything goes smoothly, you don't need to flush this line with saline. It's just something I, I wanted to do, I guess. Good job, Lindsay. Okay. We hooked them up to treatment. They had a great flight. Three hours have come and gone and they are done with dialysis, we are ready to take their needles out. This this does look kind of funny because I mean, never ever would I put two needles in without tape, without touching it, but um, this is for demonstration.
This is gauze. I'm getting very touchy with this gauze. This is going on the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm showing you how to tape. I'm not taking the needles out yet. I'm showing you how to tape. So yeah, don't get too touchy with this gauze. We want to keep, keep this area clean and sterile. So I'm going to, and this is, you'll see this in a lot of facilities. It might be the facility's requirement to tape your needles down like this. And this will help keep this site clean. And I put blue on my tape so you could see it better. Forgot where I was for a second. All right, and then I'm going to chevron this needle in. So I'm going to wrap this piece of tape around the tubing once. I Some people might do it a couple times. I find that if you have to adjust the needle, the chevron is great because it keeps the needle in place, but also the chevron also keeps the needle in place and makes it hard to adjust the needle if you have to. So make sure that that needle is in the right spot before you go chevroning. And then you're gonna put tape on top of that chevron. So that is how you keep a, a chevron tape technique secured. Next, I'm going to do the H method. So here you'll see that I put tape. I did not put the tape over where the needle goes in. You wanna keep that clean. So no tape over that site. And then I'm just gonna make an H. Beautiful. Taping is, is like art, in my opinion. So now I'm gonna show you, you might hear the phrase in the clinic, oh, why don't you just try flipping a wing? And this is if you're not getting great pressures on the machine or even a good, uh, pull back a good flash of the blood. So here I'm just literally placing these wings on top of each other. That just kind of changes where the needle is in there and helps pull the blood a little bit easier or push it. It kind of gets it off the wall of the, of the fistula. This is another example of do as I say, not as I do. Best practice is whenever you are pulling tape off the skin, you should get new tape because the more you the more you tape and detape, the less sticky the tape gets and the higher risk of the tape coming undone and then the needle falling out and um, patient bleeding. And, and patient bleeding is a big deal. The blood flow is at least 600 mils per minute. It can go up to 1,800 mils per minute. So if this needle comes out and nobody sees it, they will lose a lot of blood very quickly. So taping of the needles securely is a very important part of dialysis. And now um, just taping these up, just taping these secure. You wanna make sure that there's a little bit of give in here. Patients are really good at keeping their arms still, but sometimes, you know, their noses itch or their, something happens and they move their arm and you wanna make sure that it's not taut and not pulling on the needles. You want it to kind of pull, pull on the other, on the line, on the tape. Beautiful, Lindsay, good job. Now I think it's time to remove the tape. After all that hard work, it's time to remove the tape and take the needles out. Now their flight has landed. Now we're gonna take the needles out. And this, this takes some practice too. At our facility, the needle that is most proximal to the patient, the venous needle, that is the needle that we take out first. And that just makes it easier when the patient holds pressure that we're not crossing. Because if the patient's holding pressure down on the arterial site, you kind of like have to work around to get to that venous needle. So that's why we do this venous needle first or the most proximal needle. All right, so now I have to, I'm gonna move the safety up. Be very careful when you're removing these needles. A lot of our new staff do get needle sticks. So just, just be careful and take your time and use that safety. All right, holding, never letting go of that needle. And now pick, like here, I want you to like pick a corner that stays clean and don't let that touch your hand. Just let, keep one corner clean. And that clean corner, you're gonna place on top of the needle and then fold it over. And now 
get the safety up there and I'm gonna pull that needle out nice and smooth. This takes practice. I came from the inpatient setting and when you take out IVs, they don't lead that much. So I'll just like take out the IV needle and then tape it down and let go. These are big needles and there's a lot of blood flow. If you let go here, they are going to bleed. So once you tape it down, you're going to have the patient, patient hold that site with their gloved hand. They're going to clean. Before you do any of this, you're going to clean their hands with hand sanitizer, put a glove on them, and then they are going to hold this site while you take the other one out. Our facility, some patients can't hold their fistula site. Our facility allows clamps after the fistula is six months old. Never clamp a graft, and you might put a clamp on here, but definitely encourage patients to hold the site themselves. And you'll hold for 10 minutes. So we'll pretend that a patient's holding here or it's been 10 minutes. And you know, it's okay, it's okay if you're if you're in acutes and you're the only one and the patient can't hold this site and it's it's a graft, you can just take one needle out and hold pressure until it's done bleeding, and then move to the next needle. Just take your time sometimes. All right, here I'm gonna pick a clean corner. I'm not gonna let it touch anything. I'm gonna place that on top of the needle. Get that safety ready. I'm going to pull that needle out. And I'm going to put those wings flat again. I don't want to pull out the needle while the, the wings are folded. I want those wings flat. All right. Dialysis, dialysis is done. You get to go home. Oh, and then, you know, sometimes you forget to put the tape out. So here you get real good at pretending you have three hands. Paper tape is used more often than plastic tape. Plastic tape is just what I had. Paper tape is easier on the skin, but sometimes patient need, patients need plastic, plastic tape because, I don't know, they paper tape just doesn't stick. So now it's been 10 minutes. The patient's like, hey, Lindsay, it's been 10 minutes. I'm ready to go. Can you tape me up? And I'm like, oh, I'd love to tape you up. And this is a very important part. I don't even ask patients if I should switch out my their gauze. You just switch it out because you need to make sure that they're done bleeding. I'm going to check for bleeding, make sure there's no oozing. I'm going to put new gauze on there and I'm going to tape it up. Each each site, I use three pieces of tape, one in the middle and then one on each side. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to watch for shadowing. I'm going to watch to make sure they're not re-bleeding. It's easier to clean up a mess. It's easier to catch bleeding here than when they walk to the scale or if they leave the facility and they start bleeding. That can be very dangerous for the patient because, as I said, there's a lot of blood flowing through that fistula. So I've got one, two, three pieces of tape. No shadowing. That site has stopped bleeding. And now I'm going to do this same here. I've got all my PPE on. I've got my mask. I've got my shield. I've got my lab coat. And I'm going to check to make sure they're not bleeding. And sometimes patients, especially the new ones or that don't realize how important it is or how much blood can go out. And this is just, you just have to teach them. They'll be like, oh, you know, it's only been a couple minutes. And they'll, they'll be like, oh, I'm ready. If, they, if it's too soon, that blood will sh shoot right out of there. So it is important to check to make sure that their bleeding has stopped before you let them walk to the scale. I got three pieces of tape. Awesome. And that's how it's done, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Ooh, we get to watch it again. This is the part where I say like and subscribe and then check out those videos over there and I will sing a song about dialysis and fistulas and